Okay, so now we're going to talk more about modeling, specifically modeling with linear equations. First, we're going to go through some vocabulary because this comes up a lot in the modeling process. So we want to make sure we understand these words. We don't need to necessarily have to be able to formally define them, uh, but we do need to understand their differences, what they mean when we see them. Um, so I want you to take a minute, pause the video, and try to write down uh, what you think the difference is between simplify versus solve. So if you had directions that said simplify, and if you had directions that said solve, uh, how would you approach the problem differently? How are those similar? Um, so I want you to write down a few things. Uh, pause the video, unpause me, ready to discuss. Okay, so some things that you may or may not have come up with is when we talk about simplifying, we're just really looking to combine like terms, possibly eliminate or reduce things. Uh, we're not trying to get a specific answer. Whereas when we talk about solving, we are. We're trying to isolate some variable. Uh, you know, we would be told what that variable is, but that's what we're trying to do. We may or may not get a numerical answer. It depends on um, what the original uh, equation involved. We are going to use our simplifying techniques within solving. Okay, here's another one. What is the difference between an equation and an expression? Uh, this one should be much simpler and more straightforward, but again, pause the video, write down what you think the difference is, unpause me, ready to discuss. Okay, an equation has an equal sign. We solve an equation. An expression does not have an equal sign. It can still have mathematical operations. There can be multiplication, addition, uh, subtraction, division. Uh, exponents, all of that can be in an expression, just like they can be in an equation, but there is no equal sign, so we cannot solve an expression. Um, so usually we simplify expressions, we solve equations. However, again, uh, there can be simplifying involved in solving an equation. Alright, so next thing, I want you to write down what each of these words means mathematically, and also this might be the same thing, but uh, come up with other phrases in math that would mean the same thing. So pause the video, do that, unpause when you are ready to discuss. Okay, so hopefully you remember or recognize that product means multiply or multiplication. Uh, other words um, when we see verbal expressions might be if you see the phrase times or percent of. Um, some means addition. Other things that you might see that mean the same thing would be if we, if you see a phrase that says something is increased by a certain amount or it's more than a certain amount, or if you see plus, uh, difference means subtraction. So if you see the phrase minus or reduced by or less than, uh, and then quotient means division. We talked about that earlier already. Um, or divided by, or if you see ratio or something per, uh, that those are all going to indicate division. Okay, next I want you to take these next three examples and we are going to write a verbal description of the algebraic expression without using the variable. Uh, so we'll do the first one together. So for instance, and there are more, uh, there are multiple correct ways you can do this, um, but it should be something along these lines. So if I have x plus 4, I want to write a verbal description for that. So I would say, Four more than a number. So a number is representing the variable. I don't want to use x. Okay, so x plus four as a verbal description is four more than a number. So now I want you to do that for the next two. Pause the video, try, unpause when you're ready to discuss. Okay, so again, these are not the only way to verbally describe these. Um, so if I have y minus 4 over 5, I could say 4 less than a number all divided by 5. Um, you could say something about the ratio of 4 less than a number and 5. Um, so there are other ways to say this. When I have 12x times the quantity x minus 5, I can say the product of 12 times a number and 5 less than the number. Again, there's a few other ways you can say this if you're not sure check with your teacher in class.
Next thing, write an algebraic expression for the verbal description. So now we're going the other way. So before we were given the um, algebraic expression and we were writing the verbal description, now we're writing the algebraic expression. So again, we'll do the first one together. So the sum of two consecutive natural numbers. So first I have to think about a variable. What do I want to call the first number? Well, I can call the first number x. If I call the first number x, what is the next consecutive number after x? Well, it's going to be x plus 1. And then I am writing the sum of these, so it's going to be x plus x plus 1. You could also write that as 2x plus 1. So either of these are correct. I did not say to simplify. So we can leave it like this or like this. In this form, it's easier to see the two consecutive natural numbers and the sum of them. So now I want you to do uh, B and C. Pause the video. Write down uh, an algebraic expression for each. Unpause when you're ready to discuss. Okay, I think I misspoke. I meant for you to do the next three, so hopefully you did that. If not, we'll go over the last one together then. Okay, so the distance traveled in T hours by a car traveling at 50 miles per hour would be 50 T. Remember, we are trying to write an expression. So if we said D equals 50 T, that would be an equation. But we just wanted an expression to represent distance, so we just say 50 T. Uh, for the next one, the perimeter of a rectangle with a width X and a length that is twice the width. So I know normally perimeter is 2 times the width plus 2 times the length. Well, my width is x. My length is 2 times that width. So I have 2x plus 2 times the quantity 2x, which becomes 6x. So my expression to represent the perimeter is 6x. 30% of the list price L. So if the list price is L, 30% of L is 0.3 times L. That is my expression. Okay, now we're moving on to the modeling part. We want to write a mathematical model for the verbal description and we want to solve it. So now we're actually going to come up with an answer after we write down the model. So again, we'll do A together and then I'll have you do B and C on your own. So one positive number is five times another number. What do you want the numbers to represent? We need to pick a variable. I'm going to use x and y. So one positive number x is, means equals, 5 times another number. So 5y. Now, keep in mind these numbers are positive numbers. So it's a key thing that it tells us that they are positive numbers because the next uh, relationship, which is a difference, I need to make sure that I have the larger number minus the smaller number. So if x is 5 times y, then x is the larger number based on how I wrote this first equation. So my next equation is going to be x minus y is 148 because I know the difference between the two numbers is 148. So anytime we see is, that's telling us equals uh, so again, another keywords we want to be able to pull out from a verbal description. So now I need to solve the system of equations. Weird, we just did that. So if I have x equals 5y and x minus y is 148, again, I can use substitution and or elimination. Since I have x equals 5y, I'm just going to do substitution. So I'm going to say 5y minus y equals 148. and I get y equals 37. Now remember it said find the numbers, not just find one of the numbers. So I also need to find x, but I know x is 5 times y, so 5 times 37 is going to be 185. Okay, so now I want you to do the next, or I want you to do that for b and for c. Pause the video, find those solutions, unpause me, ready to discuss. 
Okay, so if 432 is what percent of 1600, I say 432 is means equals what percent is going to be, whenever you see the what, that's your variable, so that's going to be my x. Of means multiplication, so times 1600. Divide both sides by 1600, I get 0.27 equals x. So 432 is 27% of 1600. Again, make sure you answer the question. It wanted an answer as a percent, not as a decimal. Uh, for C, this one's a little bit more work. Um, so, the price of a swimming pool has been discounted 16.5 percent. The sale price is $1,210.75. Find the original list price of the pool. So, I'm going to say X is the original list price. So think about this, this you, you encounter this all the time in your everyday life, I'm sure. You go to the store, you want to buy something, it's on sale for some percentage, and so now it has some lower price. Well, what was the original price? Well, at the store, a lot of times it'll tell you actually what the original price is also. Uh, here it doesn't, so we're trying to find that original price. There's two ways you can start out this problem. They are actually doing the same thing. One of them is kind of combining the first step, though. So... If you want to write this out fully, what's actually happening? Well, we're taking the original price, which I'm calling x, and then we are subtracting 16.5% of x, so 0.165x. We know that equals the new sale price. Well, what does that actually mean? Well, if we subtracted 16.5% of the original price from the original price, that means that we're actually taking 83.5% of the original price. So x minus 0.165x is 0.835x. If you understand this process, you can jump right to this equation in the beginning. If not, then write this out. It's fine. It's just one extra step. So now I divide both sides by 0.835 and I end up with x equals $1,450. Now here you want to double check, does my answer make sense? And this goes for B and uh, A as well. Make sure your answer makes sense. So if the sale price of the pool is $1,210.75, then the original price should be more than that. But it shouldn't be a lot more than that because it was only discounted 16.5%. So to go from 1450 to 1210 dollars that, that sounds about 16.5%. Um, the same with up here, that you should be able to do a pretty good approximation that 400 is going to be 25%. So 432, 27%. That makes sense. Um, but whenever you're doing these problems, you always want to make sure your answer makes sense. And make sure you take your time in writing out the equation when you're doing the modeling. Because again, if you mess up the equation, it doesn't matter how well you are at solving the algebra, you're going to get the wrong answer.